up you guys i'm back finally it's been two weeks but it's been two weeks and for a reason because i've been up to mad shit from advice columns to the lens shout out to you the lens to a whole bunch of other shit it's just i have so much in store for you guys and i'm getting ready for tle because it is the tle takeover tle 2014 hashtag tle 2014 this week's episode is called the shade episode and you know why i decided to do the shade episode so early on is because i feel like i'm ready to tell a story and again this is an experience this is my experience for y'all raggedy asses and my raggedy ass for us to just both share and understand you know so first things first of course i gotta cover the hot topics because there is some shade that is being thrown all over the celebrity world and i'm here to tell y'all so of course, I gotta start with the shadiest of them all, Chris Brown and Karuchi. Or, you know, Coco Pebbles, Cream of Wee, however you prefer to say her name. It just starts with a K, keeping up with the Karuchis. I don't really care. I just, you know, have to cover it because it's full of shade. So, the shade between Chris Brown and Karuchi this week is that their love story, love triangle turned into a love duo is finally over. And the reason why I say it's finally over is because I just felt like Karuchi was being played this entire time. I don't know about Cha, but Chris Brown has been shading the shit out of Karuchi from the very beginning. Because we all know that Karuchi was just that girl that he found at the club that just so happened to be light-skinned and had the same haircut that Rihanna had at the time. And, you know, wanted that replacement, that number two girl that was going to be there as a ride-or-die chick. And don't get me wrong, Karuchi, you have been a ride-or-die chick, girl. But how long can you ride out? Because, I mean, the wheels have fell off, and the motherfucking train left the damn station. So what the fuck is going on? Like, So I'm happy that it's over. Um, this was confirmed by Karuchi on her Twitter. As you can see right here, she tweeted, oh, not dating anyone, stop with the BS, something like that. And then Chris Brown went later on and tweeted later that week, literally a week after from her tweet, saying, oh, I will, Kay will always be in my heart, and she know that. Hopefully it makes for some good music because at the end of the day, he does need new storylines. The motherfucker's back in jail. And it's like, I just feel like I keep repeating myself with this bitch. Like, Chrissy, baby, sweetie, honey, come on. Like, get your life. Hashtag get your life. Like, you went to rehab because of all of these anger management and all these little, you know, problems that you keep on having from your childhood that apparently your mother wasn't smart enough or educated enough to say, hey, let's go to therapy back when you were nine and you saw that she was getting her ass beat. Now you're dealing with those issues now in 20-something-year-old while your ex is somewhere in New Amsterdam talking about all I see is signs, all I see is dollar signs. But you're, all you're seeing is bars, no sentences, like you're behind bars. Get your life. The shadiest part of all of this, like I was just telling y'all a couple seconds ago in the Chris Brown and Karuchi story, is the fact that his ex, Rihanna, Bad Gal Reby, shout out to you, Bad Gal Reby, is overseas doing it somewhere with Drake while he's still on his Would You Like and Make Would You Like a Tour Tour. Which I P.S. I don't really care for that name of the tour. At first I was like, oh that's mad cute, would you like a tour? But then it's like if you say would you like a tour tour, it sounds weird. Anyways. So, Drake and Rihanna have been playing, you know, hide and go seek with each other all damn year round in 2013, trying to hide, acting like they was boo loving, but not really and didn't want to let nobody know, which I knew all along because, hello, I'm TLE, that's why I'm here, I know all the school, and I'm telling y'all that when I say these motherfuckers will confirm their relationship at the end of the year, and this is who is going to have Re Drake's baby, it's going to be Rihanna, and you heard it here first. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. The reason why is because Drake and Rihanna are meant for each other. He's a bitch and he's a nigga. And that's why it works out perfectly. He's all in his emotions. He's, you know, 
very passionate about things, and she's very hardcore, don't really give a damn about life and her, and her pussy and things of that nature. So it, it's only right that they've been together. Lately, they've been spotted going in and out of restaurants, going in and out of clubs, and recently, you can see in this picture, they're holding hands, walking into somebody's parking lot, and... Girl, it's just a mess. She's seen at every damn show with her best friend Melissa and the other Caribbean one. And, yeah, like, I'm over it. Like, honestly, like, I'm happy for her because I need her to be with somebody. I'd rather her to be with him than to just be with the rest of America. But at the same time, it's sort of like, Drake, for real? Like, I was single. What happened? The shadiest story of this week, y'all, is... All these relationships, they get back together, they break up. You got Rihanna on one side of the world popping her pussy for a real nigga. You got Drake chasing after her. You got Karuchi eating Fruity Pebbles and crying, hanging out with Drea from Love, Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wise. One of those VH1 Ratchet Monday shows. Shout out to Ratchet Nice on VH1, though. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, the craziest and shadiest story of them all is that Jennifer Hudson ended her relationship. Nah, JK, but it wasn't with her man, though, because, you know, she is a ride. She's a ride or die. Like, shout out to Jennifer Hudson. Like, you got your shit together. You said, we are dream girls. And you went on and with your dreams, and you did the damn thing. And then you was in the commercial, like, sun in the sky. You know how I feel. Yes. Shout out to you and your Wave Watchers. But that's the relationship she ended. She ended her relationship with Wave Watchers, y'all. Ain't that some shit? A bitch done got skinny and said, oh, I'm good, thank you. You know, I got my little pixie haircut. I'm all skinny and shit now. I don't need you guys anymore. How cute for you, bitch. You know what? Don't bite the hands that feed you. Literally, Weight Watchers was giving you some good-ass food and keeping you that thin. I hope you don't get fat. And that's the wrap. That's it. That's all I got to say. I just hope you don't get fat again. Nothing that's, there's nothing wrong with the big girls, I mean. Clearly, I'm thick as hell. But... I just, I just don't see it for you being big again because there's no way to come back from that. Like, there's no way, like, yeah, I was skinny as hell, had my little pixie cut, sun in the sky, you know how I'm feeling, and then you fall off the sun. Because that's exactly what's going to happen if you get big again. So, shout out to you, Jennifer Hudson. And Wave Watchers, if you're looking for the next person, I'm available. Contact my publicist. My favorite part of the show, hashtag get your life advice. And this week, I don't have a question. For you guys, from a, one of the amazing questions that you guys have been submitting. Shout out to everyone who's been submitting questions at stevenlondonexperience at gmail.com. But um, rather, I'm going to do a hashtag London Logic this week. Hashtag London Logic. And again, the name of the episode is The Shade Episode. So there wouldn't be no shade episode if I didn't throw shade. No shade. Hashtag shade. Okay, so... My London Logic advice of this week is independency. And the reason why I'm I'm throwing shade with independency is because I think that it's one of the things that I struggle with the most, and I think that it's something that you guys struggle with a lot too. You know, a lot of times we claim, you know, I'm an independent woman or I'm an independent man, I got my own, I pay my own, all of this shit. But at the end of the day, do we really, like, how many times do you find yourself in situations that you depend on other people? For example, I'll tell you a little story of mine, and which is why I'm about to throw shade. Um, this right here, this right here, this, this space right here where I'm at right now, and the fact that I haven't been with you guys for two weeks is because I had to learn to be independent. Um, I was working with a couple of individuals on this show before. Um, I had a videographer, I had an editor, I had a whole team behind me that was completely supportive of me and my vision and making these popping ass videos that I think are somewhat funny when, you know, I'm being ratchet with my raggedy ass. And, you know, like, I I really thought that I had them. And long story short, when it goes and goes and gets tough, bitches were nowhere to be found. You know, I literally was out of everyone. No camera, no tripod, no chair, no location, no nothing. All I had was you guys, my YouTube channel, and that's about it. And I said, well, what the fuck do I do now? Like, what's going to happen? Like, am I going to stop making videos? I don't have a camera. I don't have none of that. And I had to just put on my big ass boxes and, and grow the fuck up and say, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and mope around and depend on other people to do what it is that I have to do for me. You feel me? I had to go and dip into my savings 
and my refund check, and I got me a big ass camera, and I got me a big ass tripod that this camera's standing on right now, and I went and grabbed my motherfucking publicist and said, you know what, bitch? I need you to go and press record for me. Oh, and as far as editing, at the end, I don't know if y'all peep now, instead of saying Chris Sand and it says Steven London, and that's because I'm editing it out too. I do it all. You know, and it's not to brag. It's not to say, oh, yeah, look at me. I do everything. I'm a popping ass bitch. But at the end of the day, I know that I can say that I'm independent with my own work. And that don't ever feel as though that you need somebody. Period. Like, don't ever feel that way. You feel me? If niggas is not appreciating what you bring to the table, then let them eat alone. Period. Hashtag period. Like, period. Like, it don't even matter. Like, if niggas do not like what you're bringing to the table, understand that that feast that you're going to have alone, people are going to be starving one day for that exact same plate. And that's the way you got to look at it. So, thank you guys for watching. This is our, what, fourth episode now? Look at us. We're doing it, yo. Shout out to us for, you know, watching TOE and putting up with my raggedy ass. Remember to subscribe, youtube.com forward slash The London Experience, and also follow me on Instagram at The London Experience. All the little things are going to be like right here somewhere. And last but not least, I have a surprise for you guys. I have a website coming out. London's very own .net. Finally, you can watch all of my episodes, read my daily blogs and blurbs, London styles, London tea. It's going to be London everything, but you're going to think that you're really at the UK, all right? 